Welcome back once again everyone, I'm Capeblaze Games, this is EVE Online, let's fit a battleship for running level 4 missions shall we? We're munching our way through this list. The list is down to 6 ships, here they are in alphabetical order. They are the Abaddon, the Apocalypse, the Armageddon, so that's all 3 of our ships I know. This is not deliberate, this is just the way that the random number generator has worked. We have the Hyperion, Tempest and Typhoon still to go as well. So speaking of Mr. Random Number Generator, let's consult him now and we shall say minimum one, maximum six, give me a number. Number four, so once again we're not doing a, an Amar ship, sorry about that, but you know, the random number generator must be obeyed. And he is telling us number four and that is a Hyperion. Interesting. Now I did say at the end of the Megathron video, if we ever did roll a Hyperion, I would try and make it a blasted and web fit. So I'm going to have to try that. So let's have a look at the Hyperion. And as usual, we'll look at the traits first. And the traits per level of Galantian battleship are 10% bonus to large hybrid turret damage. Now 10% is a very large amount indeed. So at maximum skills, which is what I have at Galente Battleship 5, you will be getting 50% bonus to damage. This thing hits hard. And a 7.5% bonus to armor repair amount. So it's definitely an active armor tanking high damage ship. And as always, it's got the same roll bonus that all the battleships have these days. Just gets more hit points to passive tanking. Not that we're going to be passive tanking this. Well, let's take a look at the fit itself. We have seven high slots and six turret slots. So one of our high slots is going to be utility. Mid power slots, we have five of them, which is quite a lot. So that'll be probably a micro watt drive, a couple of webs, the rest of it will be capacitor. And then we have a huge seven low slots, probably three for damage, the rest for tank, maybe a bit of cap and the usual three rig slots with 400 calibration. So let's get right into this shall we? First thing we're going to do is have a look at propulsion. We're going to try and get a 500 mega newton quad lift restrained micro watt drive on this thing. Boom, caps down to 10 and a half minutes already. But the navigation is over a thousand meters a second, which isn't too shabby for a big battleship. And we also said webs, so let's indeed get a couple of webs on this thing. I think endurings makes more sense. Now, we do have the option, because this is a battleship, to fit grapplers. And the way grapplers work is, as we see, these actually have an optimal range and a falloff range. And the way these work is uh, the closer you are, the slower they will make things. So if we are right on a thousand meters, our target will be slowed by 85% and it will be slowed down by a lesser amount the further away it is. The other thing about grapplers is that they use a lot of power grid and CPU. 220 power, 30 CPU, whereas normal webs just use 1 power and 25 CPU. Normal webs do only slow things down by 55%, but I think using two of them because they do stack is probably better than fitting a grappler because the grappler's power grid use is just a little bit too high for my liking. That'll do for the mid slots just now. Now we'll come down here and have a look at the armor tank, which we're going to do a reactive armor hardener and a tech 2 large armor rep. Now I do kind of want to get a multi-spectrum energized membrane on as well, just to boost the resistance. As we said, this is going to be an up close and personal face puncher, so it's going to need to be take a pounding. A, because it needs to last long enough to travel close enough to use its blasters, and B, because when it's up close to the enemy, they're going to be hitting it quite hard. Speaking of the blasters, just fit them now. Hybrid turrets, blasters, large. Neutrons are the big boys. And because we only need to fit six of them, we've got plenty of power grid left. Hooray! Charges! I don't think we're going to mess around with the Tech 2. Although, 822 DPS from just the ship alone is pretty good. Alright, maybe we'll put some void in the cargo bay as well as the antimatter. 
drones wise it can have 125 megabits a second which is five heavy drones which is quite interesting and it's got 175 cubic meter drone bay which is also quite interesting so that means it can easily have five ogre twos which are the highest damage galente thermal damage heavy drones that need 25 bandwidth each and we've still got 50 cubic meters left over for five hobgoblin twos and nothing else on this foot right so even with tick one antimatter and five heavy drones we're getting 874 dps already we haven't even fitted any damage modules to this thing yet so let's do that now weapon upgrades magnetic field stabilizers three tick two mag stabs 1238 dps this thing is a beast already Right, engineering equipment. We know we've got lots of power grid to play with, so let's put on a Tech 2 large camp battery. And possibly a second one. And then we'll come down and do a cap power relay. I don't think we're going to get this thing anywhere near cap stable, but it doesn't really have to be. It just needs to be a little bit better cap wise than it is right now. We don't really need to boost the damage anymore. Maybe a navigation rig to increase the speed of the ship might be a good thing. I'll investigate that after a couple of cap rigs. 420 from the Tech 2 semiconductor memory cell and 341 from the cap control, so memory cell. And another memory cell. Only 6 minutes of cap, I mean it's 20 minutes with the micro warp drive off. Remember, this is literally point blank. The fall off range is 17 kilometers. So again, we'll have a look at the large astronautic rigs, see if you can get a auxiliary thrusters two on. No, it's flashing auxiliary thrusters one. Yes. Well, that'll put us up to 11.26. Speeds it up a little bit, I suppose. It does reduce the total armour amount but then this is active tanked so we're not that concerned about that now do we think that's at all viable what can we we've still got lots of power grid left over and we've got some cpu to play with as well so, um, one thing we could do to help the cap is fit a heavy nosferatu on this ship nosferatu drain or they transfer energy from the target to you so it actually generates cap when we fight it. That's maybe not a bad idea, you know. I mean, this is a very silly, balls to the wall, not very practical fit. But I'm tempted to say we just go over that. Or we could remove the third mag stab. Turrets go down to 820 DPS. I mean, we are losing 100 DPS, but we could increase the tank by quite a lot by doing that. Then what we could do is to fit two actual armor hardeners on, like a kinetic and thermal one. Yeah, resistance is up over 70 and they'll go even higher once this dials in. Again, the cap is pretty crappy, but then eight minutes should be all right, because hopefully we won't need to have the armor repairer on all the time. Right, I think we'll do this and we'll put an explosive and an EM hardener on the fit as well because we'll swap these out depending on what missions we're given. We're not gonna mess around with tech 2 ammo because I don't think we need to. We'll have to be careful with our ogres. Now let's just go with this. It is 500 million this but that's quite a lot of that is going to be from these tech 2 semiconductor memory cells. There's one other thing we could have done instead of the um, cap batteries and actually use cap boosters. Replace one of them with a cap booster and then manually inject 3200 gigajoules of cap whenever we need to. So that is maybe possibly the better thing to do. When this is off it's giving us 540 cap, when that's off it's only 4 minutes 10. I think that's maybe the better idea. So how many cap booster at 3200 can we fit in the cargo not very many 
six apparently. So six times a mission. We can pop this and get 3200 gigajoules of cap. How much cap do we have in total? 12,000. Is that wise? I'm not so sure. I think maybe 800s might be the better call here because we can carry a lot more of them. Like a lot more. How many does it hold? Five. So what? Carry an extra 25. Right, let's do it. This is what we're sticking with. Alrighty then, here is our brand new Hyperion. It's quite likely to explode at some point during this mission. Lots of guns on the very front for some reason. Lots of guns on the very back. And I'm assuming there will be a couple somewhere else on the ship. Well, this is what we've built. Let's see what it can do. And we've been given a drone mission called Infiltrated Outpost. Now obviously we're only going to be firing kinetic and thermal, but we're firing so much of it that we should be able to kill some drones. So one jump over, we're getting 712,000 ISK and 3719 loyalty points for finishing this mission, with a bonus of 841,000 if we do it within three and a half hours. Let's accept and hope we don't die. Right, we're in the mission system. I have made one concession to the fit. I have removed the specific hardeners and fitted two multi-spectrum energized membranes instead, just to round out the resistances. Because this is drones, some of them do EM, some of them do explosives, some of them do kinetic, some of them do thermal. So we really had to be quite balanced. Warp drive active. If we're being shot with explosive, the reactive armor hardener will plug any of these gaps. And for what it's worth, we're going to turn on the tactical overlay, even though this is our range. Weapon range, optimal range, four and a half kilometers. This is going to be fun. Probably am going to group the weapons. We ain't going to be splitting fire. Bring the drones back and we'll put out the big drones and see if these cruisers switch aggro to them. If they do, we'll have to bring them back straight away. No, we're not killing this battleship very quickly, are we? 
Let's change our orbit distance to 3,000 meters so we get closer. Yeah, the drones are under attack now. So we'll just bring them back. If indeed they can catch up to the ship. Okay, the drones are just doing their own thing. Maybe if we just turn off the micro warp drive, they were actually in range. Will that help get more smashes? It's just a graze. And we're webbed as well now because one of these drones is elite. So let's get our light drones to kill it. So far, so slow. Yeah. At least the drones have decided to go and shoot a frigate, and we're still in shields. I mean, we're not in armour yet. That's something at least. Well, that worked. Just finished off that cruiser with one shot. And that one with two shots. Alright, maybe, maybe it is kind of working. Maybe that battleship just had really high kinetic resistances. I'm not sure. Bring in the light drones, put out the heavies again. And big drones, can you go and kill this viral infector thing over here? Hmm, no. We seem to be killing things before we even get into web range, at least cruisers anyway. Yeah, they've instantly de-aggressed me and sh started shooting at the drones, which is quite annoying. The big drones do have quite a lot of health. They should be okay. Yeah, they just absolutely demolished that guy, so we'll just bring the drones back. Right, we're finally in web range. Boom. Well, after the poor performance against the battleship. We did alright against everything else. Cap was never in trouble because we never turned the tank on because we never got below sh shields. Maybe the two webs is the wrong way to go. Maybe we should go for two tracking computers with range scripts just to increase the fall off to something like 25 which is a little bit more viable. We'll find out once we get through this acceleration gate. Warp drive active. There's three drone bunkers, very much like this one, in this second room. And all you have to do is to pop all three of these and then leave, but they're about 100 kilometers away, so we won't be doing that from here. There are a lot of ships in this next room, an awful lot. Yeah, you need to destroy the drone bunkers and all the guards, and this is all the guards all the way up here. So we're just going to have to approach the battleships. And hope that not all three groups aggress at the same time. If they do, we are in serious trouble. There are a lot of elite frigates in this room. So I'm going to be loath to put the any of the drones out until I've got rid of them, or at least aggress them, or at least got close enough so that if we do put the light drones out they can come back straight away. We'll just try and aggress them with the blasters from here. Fall off range is what, 17? I could try and keep it range, 15k. Yeah, we managed to kill a frigate. There's nothing else. Can't have to turn the tank on now. Right, drones kill frigates. Me, keep it range to cruisers. Battle cruisers would be the need to kill first, actually. Still quite a lot of frigates, but we'll let the well the drones are just attacking battle cruisers because that's what drones do, they're just stupid. Yeah, we've got stuck in scenery, so we're going to have to double-click away from that. 
because we don't want to be not moving. That would be a bad thing. Okay, it looks like some of the elite drones from the other group have aggressed us as well. Or aggressed the drones, at least. And that one next. Just approach it. Smash it from here. This has not gone as badly as I thought it would, you know. It really hasn't. Famous last words. Get the drones back out. Cap's not looking very happy. We'll just manually inject 800 gigajoules into the cap. And there we are. Right, let's start working on these battleships. Turn the micro warp drive off. I don't think we need to be that fast anymore. The drones are kind of struggling to take down that battle cruiser, so I think we'll get them to. It's just a cruiser. Well, they've killed it. Now, are they going to have a go at frigates or not? No, they're getting shot by. Yeah, these strain guys keep aggressing the drones. Cap's still not happy, so we'll have a little bit more. Jones, get rid of these frigates. Everything seems to die pretty quickly, apart from the battleships. I'll tell you what, we should probably start stealing some um, capacitor. No, drones, don't go up there and get shot. Come down here and kill these. Yeah, the drones are getting aggressed by everything. That's okay, it'll be fine. We don't seem to be actually draining any cap from the enemies, which is a little bit concerning. Either they have no cap. It used to be the, the case that NPCs had infinite cap. Now it seems that they have no cap. Which is a little bit annoying. So it means we can't steal anything from them. So in that case, we'll just turn off the NOS, because it's not actually providing us anything, and it's costing us cap to run it. We'll risk just putting the augers out, just to kill this battleship. And the tank's actually been fine. It's just the cap I'm having to keep an eye on, and the aggression on our drones. Everything else has been okay. Right, drones, get up there, kill this enforcer. I'll just approach it. Little squirt of micro warp drive. I'm still not sure that the webs are the right idea. Usually, when we get close enough to hit things with them, with the neutron blasters, they just die really, really quickly. Like before the ship can even get into web range. Like this one is going to. Like that. Hmm. Interesting dilemma. Let's just pop our cap, turn the tank off because we're not under fire at the moment. We're going to approach the rest of the drones, which seem to be yeah, great. They're behind this bit of scenery, which I'm going to have to manually double click and fly around. That's our cap booster reloaded. Great. Lock up all the big ships. I believe they all, there's only two more strain drones left, and I believe we have them both locked. Okay, let's shoot at the Enforcer. Turn the micro warp drive off because it's making our signature radius huge. Turn the tank back on, get the drones out because the strains have warp jammed us. They were webbed as well, it's not great. Okay, battle cruiser dead. Cruiser almost one-shotted, wow. 
Nice. There are some more frigates. Just let the drones do their own thing with them. Well, this is complete chaos, but it seems to be working. Right, this one's almost dead ahead, so we'll just approach it straight away. Yeah, then the drones split the fire because, of course, so why would focus fire work? It's never worked in 19 years. Why start now? Should have turned the micro warp drive on when we were approaching. A module has run out of charges. We finally run out of ammo. Wow. At least hybrid weapons recharge in five seconds. Reload, I should say, which is nice. I'm all right. This seems to be going rather well. Uh, drone bunker. That's what we need to kill. Drone bunker. Drone bunker. Only if that were drawn, you can come back. Well, that went better than expected. Much better than expected. Pop. Wow. I'm going to turn the tank off now. We don't need it. So we know that the... new ain't doing anything. So we can take that off after this mission. We're undecided about the webs. I think maybe one web and one tracking computer might be a better option. Just to increase our fall off range so we can hit things from a little bit further away. Boom, everything's dead. Alright. I thought that was going to be a disaster and it was actually fine. Maybe this isn't the worst fit I've ever made. How's it like that then? We do have a launcher hardpoint, so I'm going to replace this heavy energy Nosferatu with a rapid heavy missile launcher if I can. That'd be nice. Yeah, I don't always do boring sniper fits. I can do close range brawlers. Right, first mission has been handed in and Gone back into the fitting simulator and we've put a rapid heavy missile launcher 2 in place of the Nosferatu which wasn't doing anything. I'm not quite sure what the point in this was. And it is only adding 77 DPS, but then again it is adding 77 DPS. Downgraded the large Tech 2 cam battery to a compact because we can we've got a cam booster anyway. Maybe we could I don't really want to get rid of it because the that would mean we'd have to use this more often. Because without like this, the cap's less than four minutes. Take this off, it goes down to three. So we're leaving that on, and that let us put on two tracking computer twos with optimal range scripts, which have extended the fall-off range to 26 kilometers, which is a bit better. As we saw with cruisers, we were killing cruisers before we even got into web range. And this will then let us put our orbit range to something around say 15k I'm fighting more in fall off like a Minmitar as opposed to a Galente battleship but that's the way it goes tank wise I'm not sure if I'm gonna change these out for the specific hardeners M maybe we will if we know who we're gonna be fighting but it seemed tank wise was fine it was killing cruisers fast enough to knock down the incoming DPS then this Rapid Heavy Missile Launcher 2 also has a flight range of 47 kilometers, so we can aggress things from a little bit further out. So I'll go and I'll go and refit the ship to this new configuration, and then we'll try it out. Okay, changes have been made, and the mission we've been given is Vengeance. Now we did this one not very long ago in another one of these videos, so. It is fresh in our memory and we know that the first two rooms dump us almost exactly right in the middle of a huge big group of enemies in rooms one and two. Room three is similar in that it drops us off inside a big clump of five battle cruisers but other than that everything else in room three is about 70k away and aggro's independently in groups. So this is quite well suited to a short range ship. It's going to test the tank that's for damn sure. 
Let's have a go at it. 1.3 million isk with another 1.2 if we do it within 6 hours and 6,000 loyalty points. Except... Now this we know is against Serpentis and we know that's kinetic and thermal. So the multi-spectrums are coming off and the kinetic and thermal hardeners are going on. Right, here we go. One other thing I did just before we undocked is that I took the augers out and I've replaced them with hammerheads simply because hammerheads will attract less aggression from things so we can put them out and leave them out. I have enough micromanaging to do on this fit as it is. So the tank is beginning at 73 and 73 but of course the reactive armor hardener will move to 30 and 30 kin and therm probably pushing the kinetic and thermal up to something like 78, 79, maybe 80 if we're lucky, which is pretty good. You see how we get on with our new improved fall off range of 26 kilometers, shall we? And the missile launchers have decided to put themselves on this one little location here and another one on the front there. Looks terrible, it's all unbalanced, but I couldn't be bothered to rearrange the weapons for aesthetics. So the missile launchers would be on the spine, wherever the spine weapons are. Never did find them. They're somewhere on the model. Alright, this is the in gate. When we take this gate, we're going to get dumped into a great big ball of bad guys, but that's fine. Warp drive active. And luckily, it means we shouldn't have to move too much in this the first two rooms at least. Best turn the tank on, or at least the hardeners. And here we go, sliding into trouble. We want to kill this group up here first, because it's all the battle cruisers, and quite a few destroyers. Stuff that dies quite quickly, but hits quite hard, so let's just approach that, and we'll put the missiles on the destroyer. And we'll see what happens. Now we've aggressed the other group that's next to them as well, but that's no problem. Okay, that's two battle cruisers dead. That's pretty good. We'll get our dro light drones to kill the incoming frigates. Look that destroyer to look up this battle cruiser. Well, the missiles killed something. So, you know, we might as well just let the missiles kill the. Wow. Right? Well, let the missiles kill the destroyers while the frig. while the drones kill the frigates and while the blasters kill the battleship. Seems to be working all right, and then I think we'll get this group next. All right, so far so good. Being dead. Our has run out of charges. Okay, that was our missile launcher running out of ammo, and because it's a rapid heavy, it's going to take 35 seconds to reload. Isn't that fun? Oh, we seem to have killed it. Drones, what are you doing? Don't attack battleships, for goodness sake. Honestly. Well, we appear to be taking cruisers down in two volleys, so, you know, it seems to be working just fine. Hey, right. drones, kill frigates and destroyers, please. A low shield warning to which we say we don't care. We're armor tanked. Yeah, these cruisers are just melting in one hit. I think moving to tracking computers was definitely the correct idea. This battleship is a little bit far away, so let's just approach it. Get some fire on it and then turn the micro warp drive off because we don't have to be within blaster range and in fact I'd rather not be. Let's change the 
orbit to 15, keep it range, we can maybe put to 20. And then stop. Drones have never come under any aggression because none of these are elite frigates, even though they're says they're guardians, they're not really. Okay, we need to approach these cruisers over here and aggress the next group. Little squirter micro warp drive, might as well just reload the guns because it only takes five seconds. And the guns are reloaded. Then we'll just come to a halt because we're now within range of everything. Just keep that one at range because he's a little bit too close. And then keep this one at range because again he's a little bit too close. So line up our weapons and nothing else. Two hits, dead. The next contestant, how many volleys are you going to survive? There's one. Blam! Wow. Uh, two. Dead. Alright. Cruisers are dying in two volleys. Nine. Mean, bad, is it? Then the drones have got confused and they're starting to shoot at cruisers instead of destroyers, but that's not a big problem. The capacitor has been fine because the micro warp drive has basically never been on. Except for a couple of little squirts to get ourselves in range. That guy took more than... demolishing their webs. This one's maybe a little bit too close. Right, let's put the drones out. Yeah, we're missing an awful lot now. If we can get the drones to draw aggro away from us and onto the drones, then we should speed up and be able to hit them again. But if not, the drones will kill them. Okay, now everything else is realised we're here and what we're doing, so we'll just bring the ship to halt, turn the micro warp drive off because we're not getting any benefit from it, and start killing things in order of range. And take some cap and booster. Need one more elite frigate to go. One of the cruisers is already dead, that's great. All the elite frigates are dead, that's awesome. That means we can put the medium drones out. 
More cat. Cauldrons go. Need to just a fortress guy, give it a squirt of micro warp. And the drones of the city. Th oh, I must have misclicked. Well, it worked out alright in the end. Let's just one shot these destroyers. That's very satisfying. Very satisfying indeed. Right, let's shoot at this battleship then. I think the battleships are trying to shoot at our drones, but they're missing all the time. Well, that's fine. I think they'll do something with their missiles. As soon as that cruiser's dead, we'll bring the drones back. And we'll bring the ship to halt. Things are so much easier when you don't have to chase the enemies down, <laughs> when they spawn right in front of you. And we'll just take more cap. I'm not enamoured of the fact that we've used all five cap booster charges straight away in room two. I'm not overly pleased that these two battleships are running away either. Okay, let's just approach this one now. As soon as this battleship's dead, we're going to start approaching all these cruisers and we'll try and pick off the frigates with our guns. We'll just leave the drones to do whatever they want with this battleship. They'll slowly chew through it. Right, let's just start approaching the cruisers now. A module has run out of charges. Yes, yeah, the missile's back under 35. Second cooldown, a reload cycle, I should say. Frigate dead. Destroyer dead. I think targeting speed's going to be the problem here. Yeah, I missed the frigate, it's too close already. Did miss the destroyer though, did we? Like, you know what, drones, just come and kill these frigates. The tank's never been in trouble. Okay, now the frigates have de aggressed us and they're aggressing the drones, but the drones will kill them very quickly. Micro little squirt of cap. That guy's dead, that guy's dead. Hey, drones can kill that cruiser. I'm gonna go and chase the battleships. And we'll just fire 77 DPS and missiles, just because why not? And we'll just reload the blasters because it only takes five seconds. Because we're actively approaching with a microwatt drive on, we should pop more capacitor. Okay, we're in blaster range now. Turn the micro white microwatt drive off. Only got eight cap booster charges left, so let's try not to use any in this room, because we're about to reload. I'll just turn the tank off for a little while. Almost within fall off range, 26 is our fall off. There we are, let's shoot. Turn the micro warp drive off. One little pulse of the armor rep. A module has run out of charges. Missiles run out again, but the battleship's about to die anyway. There he goes, dead. Bring the drones back, approach the gate. Not bad. We'll just take the gate as soon as we arrive. 
Okay, we're going to be surrounded by five battle cruisers as soon as we land, but we'll kill them very quickly, and then we'll just approach the rest of the bad guys. A couple of squirts of micro watt drive to get into range, and it'll be party time. Definitely do think that the two tracking computers was the way to go, because the increased falloff range is really letting us engage at a much longer distance. Distance wasn't the problem in the first mission, because cruisers were dying before we even got close enough to web them anyway. Okay, here's the welcoming committee. Only four battle cruisers this time. It's usually five. Uh, hold control, draw a box. Preheat the weapons and fire. I'm supposed to do more damage than that. Come on. Your blasters. That's more like it. There we go. And dead. That's one down. And these things will be trying to run away to establish a orbit path further out, which means the angular velocity will be pretty much zero and will absolutely destroy them. And just like so. Alright, kill. Cool. It's a approach the next lot. And indeed, I think we'll aggress them. We'll aggress them with a rapid heavy missile launcher. Now this could get quite gnarly. If all this stuff gets in range, it will really put the hurt on us. Let's spit out the light drones. We'll tell them to attack this cruiser, and hopefully by the time they get there, our weapons will kill the cruiser, and then they'll go and elect to shoot something better instead. And they haven't. Of course they haven't. And the tank is under quite a lot of pressure because I forgot what I was doing. Whoops. Okay, you keep this guy at range. Yeah, we're webbed by these frigates, which is going to be a problem. Until the drones get rid of them, that's good. Drones, stop attacking battleships. Get rid of these frigates, for goodness sake. Prioritise, guys, come on. Okay, let's just line ourselves up with this battleship. I think the tank's going to be alright. Unless the Shemvi Nippon gets his ass in gear. Right, drones back in. I think that's all the elite figures gone. So then we'll get the medium drones out and we'll get them to take all these destroyers off the field if they can. Come on, guys. Tank's kind of holding steady. Cap's all right ish. Right. One destroyer about to explode, there we go. One battleship about to explode, there we go. Excellent. Right, let's keep this guy at range. Start working on him with our missiles as well. Drones have killed the destroyer before I could target the next one. And the drone's under fire from something. Get back. Get back in here. Quick, you're about to die. Get back in here quickly. Quicker than that, quicker than that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, there we go. Light, light drones out. Light drones. Kill the destroyers, please. Well, the tank's actually going up. So that's a nice... That's a nice observation. Of charges. We'll just keep this cruiser at range and just... Demolish it. Good. And then this one as well. Tank's still fine, cap's holding steady. I think we're going to be okay. Alrighty then, late drones can come back. We can put out the mediums again. And the mediums are going to go and chew on that cruiser. But oh yeah, I'm going to chew on the boss. Give myself a little bit of cap. Tank's been fine. Cap's the only thing we have to keep an eye on. Luckily, we haven't had to have the micro warp drive on for very long, just long enough to get ourselves in range. It's been plain sailing ever since. 
We think, are we going to kill the boss before the drones kill the cruiser? Place your bets. He's going to go in structure first. Oh, the cruiser's in structure, but then so's the boss. Oh, the boss is going to die first, isn't he? Yep, he did. Let's approach this other battleship. Give myself some caps so I can turn the micro oh, drive on for a little while. Turn the tank off, actually. Drones weren't that far behind. Not bad going, gents. Okay, now we're in range. Now you can turn that off. A little bit more cap. Turn the tank back on. This will not take very long. Indeed not. Just bring the drones back. This, this thing is just going to melt. Missiles are about to run out again. A module has run out of charges. We don't really care about them, do we? And there we go. Everything dead. Mission complete. Well. Warp drive active. Maybe this silly fit is not so silly after all. All right. That is the second mission complete. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? I thought this was a rather stupid fit, but it actually performed rather well. Who knew, eh? Who knew? I'm still kind of tempted to continue tinkering with this because I don't think that capacitor setup's right. Maybe get rid of the cap power really for a third mag stab. Something like that because the cap booster seems to be performing quite well. Then again, if you take some cap off, you'll need to use this more often. And it does only hold a certain number of cap boosts. If you use this too often, then you'll actually run out of cap boosters in your cargo and then you really will be in trouble. But anyway, that was good fun. Come back for the next episode and we'll see what more fun we can have in a different ship. Until we meet again for that, do take very good care of yourselves. I'll talk to you again soon.